Lately, AT&T has been saying, the more you hear, the better they sound. Well, hear this. MCI can save you money over AT&T on long distance anytime, 24 hours a day. And MCI goes everywhere AT&T goes, to every phone in any other state. Now, I don't know about you, but I haven't heard anything from AT&T that sounds better than MCI. Call MCI, and then call anywhere across Texas and across the country. It may be the computer age, but business still runs on paper. And when you're ready to put it on paper, you're ready for Okie Data. Okie Data personal printers. We put business on paper. Landing gear problems on a Galaxy airliner inspected just last Friday resulted in a spectacular belly landing near Atlanta today. This only eight days after the same type plane, owned by the same company, plunged to the ground in Reno, killing 68 people. A report tonight from ABC's Jay Shadler. Uh, C-21, you are familiar with the uh, phone area, is that correct, to the location? Uh, uh, C-21, to your right, gear appears up. Crippled by the failure of its landing gear, Galaxy 21's three-man crew made a dangerous belly-to-ground landing. The pilot came in and put the left gear down hard, kept the right wing up, shut the two right engines down so that they started downwinding. He kept the right wing up as high as he could, and then when he lost airspeed on the aircraft, he dropped the wing down. There were three uh, flashes of, uh, uh, of sparks at that point. It was an absolutely fantastic job of flying. Within moments, emergency teams bathed the aircraft in fire-retarding foam as the crew, uninjured, slid down a rope ladder thrown from the cockpit's window. With the crew safe, a potentially new problem arose. I talked to uh, the original investigators who were working under the aircraft, and I said, what is on board? And they said, we have hazardous cargo. I said, do you know the nature of it? They said, no, not at this point. Eventually, several containers of non-explosive but flammable toxins were removed from the plane as inspectors from the National Transportation Safety Board began their second investigation of a Galaxy Airlines accident in just eight days. Ironically, this plane, along with an identical aircraft, also owned by Galaxy Airlines, was inspected just this past weekend by federal aviation officials, and both planes were given a clean bill of health. Though 110 of these aging Lockheed Electras are currently certified to fly, Galaxy Airlines owns only one other, and its operations have been temporarily suspended but Galaxy officials say it might resume its flight schedule tomorrow, claiming the Electra is still the best plane in the skies. Jay Shadler, ABC News, Atlanta. Edwin Meese, President Reagan's embattled choice for Attorney General, defended his conduct before the Senate Judiciary Committee today. Meese appeared before the panel for the first time since a special prosecutor cleared him of criminal wrongdoing last year. Meese's ethics were again questioned today based on a report from a federal agency. The report concluded Mises' activities in two financial deals violated federal ethics standards. But despite the report, only Senator Howard Metzenbaum, Mises' chief critic, said he would oppose the nomination. Facts lead me inevitably to conclude that Mr. Mies lacks the integrity of character, the even-handedness of purpose, and the sensitivity to ethical values required of the Attorney General of the United States. Meese told the panel he has met ethical as well as legal standards of conduct. The committee may vote by Thursday on its recommendation to the full Senate. Ted Koppel will have more about the Meese nomination later tonight on Nightline. But it was smooth sailing in the full Senate for another Reagan cabinet nominee today. White House Chief of Staff James Baker was unanimously confirmed as Treasury Secretary, clearing the way for him to swap jobs with Donald Reagan. The roll call vote, 95 to nothing. Praise for Baker came from every corner of the Senate floor. Only one member had any doubts about the appointment. Wisconsin Senator William Proxmire said he had serious misgivings about Baker's qualifications. The federal government today approved a new form of drug to treat genital herpes, a disease that affects some 20 million Americans. It's not a cure, but Channel 8's Midge Hill found the drug may help to control this sexually transmitted disease that has now reached epidemic proportions. The drug acyclovir, marketed as Zovirax, is not new. In its ointment and intravenous form, it's been around for three years, but the convenience of a capsule is something new. It'll clear up herpes skin blisters sooner than the normal three weeks they last. 
It will reduce the number of outbreaks and make them less severe in 95% of the cases. And tests show that in as many as 75% of the cases, outbreaks stopped altogether. And it could help cut down the spread of the disease, which now strikes 300 to 500,000 people Hello, every Mayor. year. While patients are on the drug, they are not contagious, and this could help reduce new cases. The drug has so far shown no significant side effects. It's not recommended for small children and pregnant women. There is something else it is not. It is not a cure. That appears to be a way off. I think probably a long, fairly long way away, because we don't have uh, the mechanisms at the present time to el eliminate latency. And, uh, and uh, we doesn't look over the uh, next few years like we will. In the meantime, while research goes on to find a cure, herpes victims can reduce their symptoms with the capsules. Burroughs Welcome, the manufacturer, says Zovarax capsules will be available by prescription at your local drugstore starting February 11th. They'll cost about 60 cents a piece or $35 for 10 days of treatment in new herpes cases. Midge Hill, Channel 8 News. And scientists have just made what is being hailed as a great breakthrough in the treatment of animals. They have come up with a vaccine against the number one killer of cats, leukemia. Channel 8's Bill Brown reports the new medicine could save the lives of millions of pets. <laughs> Ashley has feline leukemia. Until recently, she would have faced almost certain death. Now she will live because of a new medical discovery. After years of research and the spending of millions of dollars, scientists finally have hit upon a vaccine that attacks and prevents leukemia in cats. About 10% of all pet cats get the deadly blood cancer. It kills more than 5 million cats in this country every year. Even the big wild cats, like this jaguar, fall victim to it. Almost everybody has lost a pet cat to the disease or knows somebody who has. It's a very hard disease to fight for us and for the people. Uh, these animals come in, they're on death's door. Uh, these people get, sometimes it's a financial drain and it's a very emotional drain to these cat owners. And sometimes these cats never reach us because they go underneath the house or they go into the woods and they just, try, they just die. Often, a cat with leukemia shows no symptoms. The disease is highly contagious. Cats spread it by licking and biting each other. Researchers with Norton Laboratories worked with doctors at Ohio State University and recently developed the vaccine, which carries the brand name Leukocell. <laughs> Veterinarians at the South Oak Cliff Animal Hospital have received some of the first of the vaccine to arrive in Texas. They say regular injections should prevent leukemia in all cats. The shots will cost $15 to $20, and someday will likely become as common as distemper and rabies injections for dogs. Dr. Jim Amada says right now, this discovery does not put scientists any closer to a cure for leukemia in people, but it is a great step forward for pet owners. This disease leads into other diseases for the cats. So in other words, we're getting rid of the baseline disease for a lot of these cats dying. So we're very excited about that vaccine right now. Bill Brown, Channel 8 News in Oak Cliff. Well, it looks to me like we're going to have uh, some fun in the next uh, couple of days yeah. ourselves. Well, I tell you what, it's 50 degrees or so out, and it's kind of foggy, and it's drizzly and cold, but this is going to look real good this time tomorrow night, because this time tomorrow night we'll be dropping through the low 20s, and the wind chill will be below zero, and there may be frozen stuff falling out of the sky. But stay tuned. We'll try to find something good about this when we come oh. back. <laughs> Avis knows how frustrating it is to wait for your rental car. That's why we invented the wizard number, so you can go right from your plane to the Avis bus. I hate to wait. We'll get you on your way and into your car fast. We know you hate to wait, so from reservation to return. I hate to wait. He hates to wait. We're trying harder, faster. I hate to wait. They were boyhood friends. Time casualties. <laughs> they were both crazy, you know. Oh. I just want to help my friend. They were forgotten heroes fighting to survive with the only weapon they had left their friendship. Don't worry, Bertie, they can't make me leave here. Bertie, rated R. Starts Friday at theaters in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Check your newspapers.
Watch a hometown boy shine on entertainment tonight. Where are you today, Dolly? <laughs> Robert Conrad's on the set in his kind of town. There's a quality about the Midwest, particularly about the, the city, that's very real. Then, share the thrill of victory with the winners of this year's American Music Awards. Next, meet one of Mother Nature's biggest fans, master filmmaker David Attenborough. All coming up on the next entertainment tonight. After the News 8 update. The wind chill, equivalent temperatures in Montana, the Dakotas, and Minnesota tonight will be 70 below zero or so. Well, we won't get quite that cold, but it'll be cold enough for Texas, I think, tomorrow night. Here's a satellite picture from when we last visited during the 6 o'clock hour, and we're seeing cloudiness coming up from the southwest. This is part two of the bad stuff, because this means that in spite of it being very cold, we'll also have Pacific moisture overriding this cold air, and the colder air will be pushing down from this area, and it'll all come together right over us. Let's take a look at the pictures between 6 and 10. And you can see, coming this way, are those clouds. And with just a little bit of observation, you can see that the rest of it is coming this way. And that means that cold air meets moisture and instability. And that doesn't sound too good. The scenario here is one that we'd like to improve upon, but I don't think we can. We've been in our part of the country now. And we'll see that Texas is, uh, at this point, awaiting something to happen. We have uh, low cloudiness that's not showing up because, as we mentioned many times, these are infrared heat-sensitive pictures. And sometimes the low clouds are close to the temperature of the Earth. They don't show up but it enables us to better see the high clouds that are going to be affecting our weather. Let's put the systems in there and we'll see what we have going. South winds have continued over us. This trough of low pressure, which has dry air behind it, is stuck out in West Texas, meaning that we may see a little drizzle and some fog before morning, but the temperatures will stay about where they are all night. The cold front, though, is right there, just barreling through Kansas at this point and should cross the Red River before noon, come into Dallas-Fort Worth probably early afternoon, and from there on, it's all downhill. Temperatures at 10 o'clock now. 53 degrees, it's 40 to Oklahoma City, 37 Little Rock, not really that cold anywhere, 66 in Brownsville. Let's look at the wind chill equivalents. Our wind chill is 36, but that's about what it's been all day. So the temperature really hadn't changed much due to the fact that the wind stayed out of the south and we stayed moist. Let's look at the radar. Here's the Stephenville radar now from about 7 o'clock until now. Let's run these pictures that we recorded off the Stephenville radar. Nothing much happens for the first little while here. In fact, nothing happened at all. But look, down along the area here west of Austin, some showers are building up. Now, you notice they're building, but they're not moving much. I don't think we're going to see any real rain, although they will see it down in central Texas, but we may see some fog and drizzle. It's 53 out there at 10 o'clock, 93% humidity, almost to the point where you get fog anyway. Barometer 2984, steady wind is south at 20, accounting for the wind chill of 36. No precipitation officially. The day went this way now. The high temperature was 50, low was 34 this morning, and there are the norms and the records. The air quality readings today were good in Dallas and Fort Worth and the pollen was all fungus and not a lot of it. 10 o'clock tonight around the country. Here's the cold front. Behind it, the upper flow of the red arrows, the surface, the blue arrows, it's all coming our way. Here are the temperatures. Well, it's 11 below zero at Bismarck, seven at Helena, Montana, below zero, and you can bet the wind chills are way down. Now let's look at tomorrow morning in our part of the country. We'll be about 50 degrees at seven o'clock, cloudy, maybe some drizzle. By noon tomorrow, that front will be here or almost here, 55 degrees. But by late afternoon, it'll be dropping through the 30s. There may be some freezing drizzle coming across Oklahoma tomorrow night and the next day, 18 tomorrow night, only 24 Thursday afternoon. And let's look at the forecast. Tonight, it'll be fog drizzle, low 50. Tomorrow, windy and some rain by afternoon, perhaps. Maybe some snow or freezing drizzle tomorrow night, 55. 18 tomorrow night. Thursday, doesn't get any warmer than 22. Pretty good chance of snow, 15 that night. Friday, more snow possible, 28, low 18. Saturday, cloudy and 32. And on Sunday, variable clouds, 34. Can't say much about accumulations yet, but if this happens as we think it is, we may see quite a bit. I'm getting a sore throat just thinking about it. Oh my. <laughs> Thanks, Troy. <laughs> the stock market's